Mr. Ray Tate and Zach Liggett here talking about Ray's new mixtape, Now You See Me. So, Mr. Zach, how did this all start? Like, what made you see potential in Mr. Ray? Well, um, he kind of had the raw talent I was looking for. A uh, good, young Atlanta rapper, and um, I was very interested in his talent. And Ray, what made you start rapping? Um, I don't know. I was just at a camp one year, and we wasn't doing anything, so we uh, we had this little class where we had to make a beat, and then we made the beat, and it was good. So we just started saying, we just started talking, just like fake rapping, and then he told us that we had to go make a verse, so we made a verse, and we started rapping, and it was good, so I just started rapping ever since. And what made you want to put your mixtape on Spinrilla? Um, that's where every big artist mixtape is, and I'm trying to be big, so I just like trying to stretch my limits because I could have just put it on YouTube or SoundCloud, but people are already doing that, so I'm trying to go to the max. Okay, what's one of your top songs on your mixtape? Um, the top song on my mixtape is Crumble. And what's that song about? It's it's just a song like it's just a hype song like when you hear you just want to hear me turn up like it's just a fun song to dance to. Does it have any type of motive? Um, yeah, it's just, it's just like, um, no, nah, not really. It's just like a hype song, just to be real. Have you shot any music videos for yeah, any got, of your songs? I got two music videos. One of them was to a song on my mixtape called Finesse Father, and then the other one is a song to my mixtape called Done. And one of them was by this uh, young boy at uh, McGavick. Well, no, uh, Hunter's Lane, his name is Darwin. And then one of them was Wesley Crutcher with Five Out Music. So have y'all had any concerts planned or when's um, your next show? Well, I don't even have a manager, so I'm doing everything by myself in my group. <laughs> no, my group. <laughs> my group is, um... <laughs> I'm sorry. This is my. <laughs> you can catch us next time on Shania Talks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the talk show. And with us today, we have Denaro Jackson, a Clippers player, and his brand new wife. Please tell us. How you two came <coughs> to be a thing? Uh, well, we grew up together in Chicago, and um, yeah, we pretty much grew together. And at first, she was my best friend, and then I never thought that we'd be together. But here we are today. Yeah, he um, he was a lot to deal with though with the basketball, <laughs> but I encouraged him and always did through it all. So, what's it like going from being just a simple friend of Denaro Jackson, but? suddenly being in the limelight as his new fiance? Well, I honestly love it. It feels like, like it was just meant to be and I'll always be there for him or whatever. But it was hard, you know, dealing with school because he wanted to give up like so many times. But, you know, I was there through it all to motivate him. It's just like starting from the bottom and then now, like I stayed there from the bottom. And like now we're making all this money and he's like a star, so. And how are you balancing your life with her and your newfound fame? Um, I, I'm, I'm balancing it well. She's at all my games. She, she's with me wherever I go. So, And then, you know, she keeps me on track of things and keep me motivated to be in who I am now. Well, some of the people out there want to know if you might be running into any problems, considering we haven't heard much about this. I mean, recently. Uh, my trouble past is in the past now. You know. I was, I was a troubled youth when I was younger, you know, getting in trouble, going to jail, getting shot. But basketball and her, she, she found me a new way of life. So yeah, and plus I like to keep things to, well, we like to keep things to ourselves, like not put too much out for the media to see because you know how they are. And I mean, other than that, we're fine. If y'all wanted to know, we're fine financially. Our marriage is going fine. I plan on having a kid soon, but just have a little fun for now with the uh, new marriage. 
Mm-hmm. Well, do you have any new games coming up that you might be nervous about? Uh, I played LeBron James in, what, in two days for the championship, so that's always nerve-wracking, especially I'm the, the alpha dog of the team, so mm -hmm. I got to keep the team on my back and keep them motivated so I, we can get through this championship with a ring. Well, it seems like you guys have been doing well for yourself. That's all the time we have. Thank you all for joining us. Welcome to the finest art show in the land. We're here with Emmy and Noah. So guys, how does it feel from the transition from high school to college? Um, well, the art departments in high school are usually a lot smaller and than in college. So whenever I went to came into SCAD as a freshman, I was like, whoa, this is huge. No. Well, for me, it was a pretty big transition moving statewide all the way to Florida and just fitting in in a place where I hadn't been. You know, I'd lived in the South before, but not that far away. Okay, so when y'all got to SCAT and y'all got to, you know, settle in, how was it? Being without your parents and all that? Well, it's the usual college story. You get away, you're finally independent, but it's you, you feel that re sense of responsibility that you didn't have before. Yeah, it's definitely been troubling because, I mean, jobs don't pay much. Coming out of a low-wage house, it's just really hard paying all of that high high-wage tuition, just thousands and thousands of dollars coming out of it. And I can't even back it up. Student loans are crazy. So since y'all are attending an art school, do y'all have a favorite art piece at all? Or artist? Um, well, I always got lots of inspiration from Picasso, one of the big ones, but I like to dabble in photography and graphic design. I'm mostly focusing on doing documentaries and really getting behind a lot of social th social issues, more or less prejudice and whatnot. So, you know, do y'all have any good artwork that made any display back in high school or anything? Um, like nothing really that comes to mind. Um, it's just, I have a collection of some that I've just been working on all my life. Well, I had a portfolio back in high school and one of my pieces in particular, it was a uh, series followed by a few uh, paintings and pictures that I had taken and really caught the eye of a scouter all the way in college and that's how I got there. Well, I want to thank Emmy and Noah for being with us today. This is the finest art show in the land. Thank you. Welcome back to Shania Talks. We're here with Zach and Ray Tay speaking on the loss of their mother to cancer last year. And the oldest brother, Ray, having to step up and take care of a role as a parent and raise his child, I mean his brother on his own. How was your life growing up, Ray? Um, before, when we had our mother, it was, it was great. Like, we did everything together, but after she died, like, we had to, like, I had to step up, be the bigger brother. We couldn't do stuff that we used to do. Like, I had to tell him no sometimes. Like, it was just harder. How did you feel when your mother passed away? I mean, I knew what she was going, so I was okay, but I was, I was still mad at the same time. And then my brother, when he came home from school, I had to tell him, and it just, it just made me mad, like, how did you cope with this? Like, how, how did you feel about her just leaving you two here? Um, I was devastated. It was hard. It was something that personally, mentally, I couldn't deal with. But me having my brother by my side, you know, it helped me push further in life. And how were you prepared? Like, how did you prepare for this to happen? Like, did she tell you what you needed to do, or did you kind of have to figure it out on your own? No, she didn't. We couldn't be prepared for death. We didn't know it was going to happen. But 
we just push through it. He plays football, so that's what he used to make his days go by. And I do music, so that's what I do. To and keep what was pushing. the hardest part about raising your brother on your own? Like, did you have to figure things out? Like, what what was the hardest part about that? Yeah, I had to find somewhere to live first because we couldn't stay there. So I had to get another job, and it was it was hard because when he came home from school, no one was there, so he was there by himself. So he he really raised himself. Did you ever feel like giving up when things got hard? Like, yeah. did you ever argue, fight, were there ever troubles going on? Yeah, but it was never, I would never fight with him. I would fight for him. So, like, if something happened at school, I'll come up there, help him out, and then. And do you I, think that your brother had a, did a good job raising you? Yeah, I mean, my brother did a good job, you know. We didn't have our father in our life, and, you know, after our mother passed away, you know, that's what you're supposed to do as a big brother. And, you know, he did a good job. I love my brother for that. All right, thank you guys for sharing your story. That'll be all for today. You can check and come back again. We'll have a new guest here, but I, I really appreciate you for being the strong person that you are raising your brother. Thank you. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back to Social Study. Today we have Naya Bands and Denaro Savage. And these guys uh, have recently risen to fame in the last three months especially Mr. De Niro over here, yeah, yeah. Uh, who is very well known as a famous rapper, and he just dropped his latest album, and he's going to tell us about that, and Nia Bands over here is going to tell us how she rose to fame in just a few months. So guys, uh, De Niro, do you want to start off with telling me about your latest songs? Uh, I just dropped the album. I'm used to making mixtapes. Mm -hmm. But I decided to drop an album for the first time because I got signed to QC. Yeah. So uh, it's called De Niro from the Streets. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm from. I'm from the streets, and that's what I talk about. Um, I feel like this this project got a lot of potential, and I worked real hard on this one. I've been pushing it back. My fans been upset about it, but I had to to make it how how I wanted it. And you see how the how the hard work paid off. It's yeah. one of the hottest hottest albums out right now on Spin Rilla. So. Yeah. yeah, it seems like a lot of people got excited for this, con considering this is your uh, most gritty album, your most real album, the one that yeah, goes yeah. back to your roots. Everybody, everybody want to know what's real. I don't want no mm -hmm. no phony stuff, you know. I ain't gonna drop names, but you know a lot of these rappers, they ain't real. So I want to spit their real, their real stuff to them. You did. Yeah. So, um, Shania, do you want to tell us who you are and what you do? Um, yes, I got famous from taking pictures and modeling for a man named Evan. That's where it all started. Mm -hmm. And he, I had did a, a fashion show for him a couple months ago, and he posted videos, and he follows, like, a lot of people. He has yeah. over 10 million followers on Instagram. So once he posted my video, I was like, okay, so I'll post it on my page. I reposted it. I tagged, like, Tyra Banks and a whole bunch of other models that I looked up to because I always used to watch like America's Next Top Model and different shows to really teach me how to do it because I'm tall. Everybody, you play basketball? You play basketball? No, I do not play basketball. I love taking pictures. So once I reposted that on my page, I tagged her. I was telling my people I followed to, you know, tag her so she'll see my post and she finally, you know, looked at it and she posted me on my page and that's where it all started. Once she posted me, you know, and I was out there, I started up a portfolio and I started doing... Good morning and welcome to The Morning Show with Katie. I'm here with Emmy and Noah to talk about their new movie, The Crowd. So. I know this is y'all's first major production with you directing and you mm -hmm. acting. So y'all want to tell me how you know how you feel about that? Well, it's definitely a big deal for me. It's my first big movie. I've been able to act in a few things before, mostly stage acting whenever I was growing up. But it has been fun. What yeah. Uh, well, I started out doing indie films, just really small things. But uh, when it got to the crowd, it became more about doing real stories, doing things in the not cliched way that we've always seen, the, the high school story with the boring rap. And I wanted to do something using her as an actor because uh, after the audition, I saw that we could really use her in the production. Makes sense. 
So you wanna like? Why don't you tell us a little bit about like what the movie's about? Uh, the movie's centered around just troubles involving this this new era with uh, with technology with these kids. Not a cyberbully movie, just how these kids view it, how these kids see it, like getting famous on TV now through YouTube and Twitter. So. So critics have said that this movie isn't worth the money. What are your feelings on those tough mm. comments? Do you take it, you know, are you, are they hurtful or you just kind of take it in stride? I mean, every criticism is just a better way to get better the next time. I can always see a way to get better when somebody tells me that it isn't good enough in one way or another. What about you? I mean, what, how, I know this is your first major, you know, that, you know, that's got to... Yeah, kinda... hearing that, it, it is, it stings a little bit, especially being my first one, but I've learned to keep my head strong, hold it up high, just ignore it, like, well, not ignore it completely, you have to listen to it, just let that build you up instead of break you down. Sounds good. Okay, well, so, um, the movie will be out in two months, mm -hmm. so it's in June, June 20th, and that is all the time we have for today. I will see you tomorrow, same time. I am here today with two, well, one outstanding athlete, Katie and her manager, Sai. I just want to ask you, Katie, what made you decide to play softball? Um, well, I started when I was really young. And I actually thought, I was started so young that I thought softball was volleyball. My um, mom asked me, and thinking it was volleyball, I agreed to it, and then I found out that it was softball. And I just enjoyed it and just stayed with it. Okay. Who do you think was the most influential person in your life? My father, probably, because he's really, um, when I was younger, you know, he's really pushed me to work and do better. All right, what was it like playing for USA and representing your country? It was... In the Olympics. Nerve-wracking. It was very, it was very enjoyable, but it was also very, you know, nerve-wracking because, you know, they count on you to win, and it was just, it was very nerve-wracking. All right, did you play varsity in high school? If so, how many years? I did play um, varsity. I played all four years varsity. Okay. Um, what is it like hitting a home run as a professional player? It's the best feeling. Um, you know, you, you can feel it most of the time. As soon as, you know, you're, you swing and you can feel it hit the bat, you know that, you know, you usually know that that's a home run and it's one of the best feelings. For those uh, future athletes out there, what is some advice you can give to any high school or college players anywhere? Don't quit. That's my biggest thing is, you know, it is, it's gonna it's gonna get hard and it, you know you, your you know grades and it's gonna get in the way and you're gonna be tired at night and you know the coaches will make you mad and your players will make you mad you just you can't ever give up you can't quit because you'll regret it I can promise you you'll regret it all right other than being a pitcher what would be any type of position you would play on the field probably first base in your opinion, do all of your uh, teammates have the same opportunity um, for your team on playing time? Um, I do. I think we all have the same opportunity. Whether people take the opportunity is up to them, but they, we all have the same opportunities. All right. Well, that's all for the talk show today. See you later. Welcome, we here at the baddest rap show in the land. I'm chilling here with my man Almighty Spinzo here, a new coming rapper. And my man that won the last American Idol, Dylan Bush. So Dylan, how do you feel winning, or that you know you won the last American Idol ever? I feel really blessed and it's absolutely great to win. I want to thank God for that. And even Nick Cannon, he stood out to like my music as well. So I'm so glad to be there. Since you're the last winner, you know, are you hearing from any, you know, Anybody ready to sign so you? So far, anything? I say uh, two artists, which it can be uh, Jason and um, Derulo. Yep, Jason Derulo. Doing it big. 
Man, I just want to say I'm very proud of you. You know, you won the last one of it, of it all. So, congrats on you and your, you know, your future going, going ahead. You. Now, spit, <laughs> almighty spin zo, like bang. You know, I just heard about your mixtape dropping, man. How's that going for you? It's been a success, man. You know, I put a lot of effort in that. Took time, but you know, got it done. Getting your Skrilla? Yeah, man, you already It's all know. about that Skrilla, you know. Yeah. Hey, what's up with that? What's up with that rap beef, though? You and Route 3 going at it on Instagram, man. Twitter, Snap? <laughs> you dissing him in songs? He dissing you? What's going on? <laughs> Tell even, me about it. I ain't even stunning him, cuz. You know what I'm saying? He ain't nothing, man. He ain't. Uh -huh. He just an old head, dog. He... Oh, I got to tell you something. Hey, Ray. Rue, come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? What'd you say? Oh my gosh, man. Brian, I'm now. not even staying. You're not even today. online no more. We here right now. What's up? Watch out, bro. Oh. That's all you got to say? Bro. You making all these songs like you finna do something. I mean, if you ain't I'm trying to right box, now. shut up. If you ain't trying to box, shut up, bro. Man, we can say this. Get, get up. Man, if you ain't trying to box, I ain't get up. Nothing you, okay? Bro, I'm not. Bro, oh. I'm not playing no games with you, bro. What's good? It's getting hit. It's getting hit. Get him. Good, man. Yeah. Yeah. World star. World star. In the show. Oh. oh, world star. Man, I got me out here doing all this. Bro, I'm done. Don't keep going. I, I did what I got to do. Like, last night. I'm gone. I guess, I guess that ends uh, Benji's rap beef. Thank you, catch the episode. We got De Nero Savage next time. Thank you, everybody. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to VGN or the Video Gamers Network. Here I have my two gu guests and somewhat friends. Ben and Clarkson. So, we're gonna be today's topic is gonna be based off a of, uh, Midnight Club Three Double Edition Remix. So, what is it? We all actual thoughts on the game game on the PS2. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't played the PS2 in a minute. But when I did, it was jumping though. It's best game on there. Besides, you know, the sport games, it was cool. Yeah, it's 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 cool. It's good that they remastered the game and everything. You know, like like he said, you know, I hadn't played PS2 in a while, but I'm willing to play it now. I, I agree. If that's so, then let's give give it a shot, shall we? We shall. Go ahead. In this in this actual episode, the game game was actually sponsored for PC only, so it's going to be quite hard to tell tell the difference. So. What do you think is m much better? You using someone using cheat codes to actually make your car almost invincible and hard to touch, or just using straight up nitros? I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do to win. So, you know, if you're not first, you last. Ricky Bobby. So I cheat. You feel me? Get all my screw. Uh, I don't know about cheating, cause you know it's really much all about. It's just having fun. You know, you don't want to like ruin the moment and cheat, and then. So when somebody find out you're cheating, then they get mad. So, you know, it's really no fun when somebody cheats. That depends on whether if you use a shortcut or not. Speaking of which, there are three types of races. Autocross, circuit, ordered, and what's that other one? Unordered, too. Which one is your favorite? Circuit. Circuit. Yeah. It gets you the I'd most to, money. Yeah, I would have to say circuit, too. Hmm. So, which tournament do you think was the hardest? Uh, well, all tournaments hard because you know I don't like losing. So whatever I gotta do to keep getting my skill, I'm cool. Hmm. <laughs> I, I see. Another <laughs> mandatory. What, uh, what else do you think would be best considered what they added to the game? Uh, new cars. Yeah, new cars. You know, you start off with that week like that toy of the century or whatever it's called. It's, it's, it's yeah, trash. new new cars. New it's cars. super trash. I see. Another which, which one? Oh, in that case. <laughs> and that way, we actually, that's all the time we have for now. So until then, the next series will be later. Peace. Deuces. And we're back today, and I'm here with Jay Nixon, his assistant Jordan. He will be here talking about his new music and graphic animations. 
So, Mr. J. Nix, what made you start the production of graphics? To be honest, it's like I've been do doing most of this stuff like somewhat all my li life. I've been doing it like almost with several different theories, like with at Matter from Heaven Dinner Theater, other times at my church, along with camera, camera equipment as well. So it's like, maybe I should just start my own business with this. So I just started, started off with Entrepreneur. And what type of graphics do you animate? It's mostly somewhat like video games and or audio qu quality with music as well. Like this one that I'm working on, that I'm actually currently done with, but also a bit, bit iffy about. So I do test runs on it, on it myself. This one that I've currently been doing is actually called Midnight Club 3 Double Edition Remix. This one I cur currently got done with, but I'm still working with code hacks as well. And who helped you get this far? Is there anyone in particular? Mm, to anyone in particular? One, God. The second one is also where I refer to my assistant Jordan with this. Yeah, like I said, well, we haven't said it yet, but we're a startup company, and so we work from home. He has a home office so we can take movie breaks, go out to lunch, get inspired by everything out in the open, just snapping a photo or inspired by Instagram. But yeah, we work really well together and we're good friends. So. Hmm. And I've heard that you started music, so can you tell us about that? My, yes, I've also started off with music. True, it may be somewhat a little bit of instrumentalic, but the reason why is because I really don't believe in all, most lyrics that you would find in rap and hip hop sometimes. And why is that? The profanity words. The M is so like something that cuts off my negative negative emotion. So uh, something that just makes me very upset on the inside. So I decided to just get rid of that um, negative emotion or somewhat just remove it from my mind and just think of the beats every time when I just hear it. And where can we find your music? As for my music, on the other hand, it's probably you won't find it anywhere just yet because I'm recently ha having someone else de deal with that. Another person that I, that my personal friend that I call Jay, is actually going to be dealing with the music, music widespread. So we're, right now we're thinking about putting it on SoundCloud or my own personal account on YouTube. All right, and that's all for us today. You can catch us next time on Shania Talks. You can find his music on YouTube.com. Thank you. Well, welcome to Ray's Holy Show. Today we have Jesus and Satan. Um, I'm not comfortable with you right here. Can you move over there? But, Please, can you just I, go over there? But I... Uh, Jesus, you can get, yeah, get comfortable. All right. You need some water or something? I know it's a long trip from heaven. Oh, uh, no, no, thank you. I'm All already right. sitting on a cool 2.5. All right, that's, that's good. So, um, let's get straight into it. Um, I, I heard there's a little beef between you guys. Um, what happened? Mm. Like, why did you kick the devil out? Like, well, uh... He's uh, being selfish. Well, I mean, you know, uh, you know, you just don't say no to Dad, uh, so... Maybe you need to deal with that. What's well, your own problem? Dad needs to know that sometimes he can't be in charge. Maybe if some people I think, would I think. do what they were told. Yeah. Some people weren't goody two shoes all the time. Some so people are just too good, and some people just have far too little privilege. Oh, please don't touch Jesus. All right. You so, saw uh, that, right? Yeah. I you that. Saw, she pushed me. I'm gonna need you to leave after the, the show. Um, Jesus. So what have you been up to, like saving lives and stuff? Like. Well, I mean, a, a lot of tornadoes lately. A uh, few, few hurricanes. Saved a, saved a few houses here and there, yeah, yeah. What have you been up to? Me? I talk to everyone. I help, I give advice all the time. You know what, I don't help just the people who have been in tornadoes. I help those who are living everyday lives to know that it isn't, it is okay not to always be good. Um, that's great. Yeah, yeah. that's you, Jesus. <laughs> well, see. I've just been having so much fun since I got back. See, they they got these pools, man. Pools. And w and when I show up to these pool parties, I, I just I just kick off my shoes, kick off my sandals. All right, and I walk across. So you blows these people's minds. You don't swim. You just walk. No, oh. I I can't unfortunately. Uh, I can. It, it's sort of like throwing mm -hmm. yourself at the floor. Oh, 
Yeah. Not fun. Yeah, so, um, every I've, day. I've become a YouTube sensation, by the way. You have? Yeah. How many yeah. views? Uh, uh, I've got 400 subscribers right now. 400? Yeah. Real, real viral. Came back a few days ago, already getting up, getting up, yeah, posting videos of my miracles. Just 400? Me? I have everyone in the world following me. Sin after sin after sin. All right, we're done with you. Um, thank you. That's gonna, yeah, I got you. You too, Holy, I can't touch you, I'm sorry. That was our show, Ray Holy, and uh, thanks to Jesus and Satan. Well, not thanks to Satan, but you, thanks to you, Jesus. You don't need See you later. You, you. Please don't touch me. I need to save you. I got you, I got you. What's up guys, it's Hot 87 with even hot questions and even hotter interviews. Now today we got the rapper Rue in here. Now as much as I want to talk about the debut album, we have to talk about your altercation with former rapper Almighty Spinzo. So I hear that he filed a lawsuit against you, against his last interview with uh, Benjamin and his uh, radio. So yeah. do you want to discuss like your case um, right now? Yeah. Um I think he did that because he couldn't stand up for himself. So he couldn't stand up like a man and, and talk to me or even scrap it out because that's what he wanted to do at first. So he, he tried to sue me. But my manager here is not going to let that happen. So so could you be facing jail time or a um, fine or how, how that? Nah, nah. Mm. Jail time is if we if we don't got the money. But you know, I tell you making big moves. So we, we out here getting money, we can just pay this little lawsuit off. Okay. As much as I think the lawsuit is pretty over over the top, do you think y'all can ever settle y'all differences? Yeah, they, they have. They've settled they've they've settled their differences and they So y'all settled y'all differences, but y'all he's still trying to get that bread. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, like uh, can you say you settled it, but he still That's what she wanted to say. That's what she told me at the beginning. And we ain't settled nothing. He still he still making diss songs towards me. I ain't did nothing yet. Cause a lawsuit going on, if I make another diss song, he gonna try to put that towards it. So I'm not even doing nothing like that. I'm just, you feel me? So you just wanna take this this low blow and just continue on with your career? Yeah, I'm just trying to do me. Cause dissing him is making his name bigger and he just starting. So like Drake, I'm just Twitter fingers. He stay over there with it. I'll do me. Okay, okay. So, um, so, I remember I seen I seen Throwback Thursday pictures of you two and y'all went to high school together, so it's yeah. it's kind of crazy that you know y'all after the the rap game started y'all just started like separate ways and started beefing. Yeah, it's we was we was real cool. We started a group together and everything, but people started wanting me more, so I went up and he stayed here. So when I started going up, I forgot about him. I just started doing me, and then he tried to diss me. So you know. They used to be my friends, so I had to go back at them, so to make me like, but that only brings him up, so. Okay, and that's the only person you're quote unquote beefing with at the moment? Nah, it's somebody, um, now I'm not beefing with them, but they're beefing with me. Um, Would you like I the name drop or? I forgot his name. I know his real name is like Willie or something, but you know. Willie? Uh huh. Well, we're gonna save that Willie for the next time. This is Hot 87 with hot questions and even hotter interviews and we're coming back at you later with a live interview. Have a nice day. Hello, welcome. I'm um, here today with Willie and Dylan. First off, why don't you tell our audience what you do? Well, in my career, I am a well-renowned doctor who um, helps kids around the world as well as parents and other families members. So. I work on people's heads. Very nice. So, tell me. What do you call a male ladybug? I call that bad luck. Okay. Willie, why does it glue stick to the inside of the bottle? Because it's glue. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't it stick? Next question. <laughs> okay. Dylan, if you were to choke a Smurf, what color would it turn? Red. <laughs> Okay, Willie. If they squeeze olives to get olive oil, how did they get baby oil? What the f are you serious? Say it. Say it. Say it. I 
I don't know, but I guess the baby pee or something. I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> Dylan, oh. why didn't Noah squat, swat those two mosquitoes? Because he was. Bruh, I thought head. I was a... He would get stung. Okay. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. Hi, welcome to Talk Time with Cy. Here I'm joined with Ben and um, his manager, Emmy. Um, ben is a up-and-coming football player, um, number one draft pick. Um, ben, what do you have to say about that? Uh, you know, it just, you know, take long nights of practice, you know. You gotta stay focused till you can't let the girls get in the way or whatever. What girls are you talking about? He, he, he can't talk about that. Are you sure about that? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it's, he it's, should. It's fine, it's fine, I think. I don't think so. Oh. Okay, guys. Okay. Uh, my girl, you know, she's a singer. She's actually on tour right now. Really? Uh, yeah. Is she famous? Yeah, very famous. Very famous. Very famous. Mm, are you guys open? Open relationship? You're not allowed to give names. Well, oh. I can't give her a name, but yeah, we're we're open until you know get serious. But it's it's cool. Okay. Okay. Well, congratulations on that. Um, Emmy, how is it dealing with um, his? I don't know his popularity growing as an athlete. Um, it's getting pretty difficult now uh, more of a challenge than whenever I first started but um, we're starting to get the hang of it just making sure he doesn't say what he's not supposed to um, but yeah yeah okay awesome well um, Ben what is probably the best part about being an athlete like that that not many people know about maybe uh you know the you know the grind see they only see the Sunday they don't see the grind during the week, so I guess, you know, that's the most important thing because, you know, it just don't come to you. It's not given to you. You got to go get it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I understand that. Do you have any beef with any of your your co-players, um, any, anything like well, that? Well, not actually a player, but I have a beef with this rapper, you know. Oh. He kind of dissed me on the TV show. Really? Really? I mean, yeah. on his little interview, on his little interview, jump, so yeah, I got a little beef with him. Yeah, and why was that? You know, I don't know. I guess he don't like me, like my style. Because, you know, when I go out, I do it all because, you know, I came from nothing. I, I think that's enough. No. Just no, just no, I'm coming for him. I'm Emmy, coming for how, his head. How do you balance, um, like, the media um, um, and trying to maybe reduce all of the noise of the media when it comes to Ben? Um, we have to get him to stop talking quite a bit. <laughs> he likes to share, which we tell everybody all the time. You should share, but sometimes you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely understandable. All right, well, is there any, like, last comments you guys would like to say? Um, any excitement about about what's up and coming? Uh, you know, tune in uh, to the Super Bowl. For my first one since I've been in the NFL. Check me out. Awesome. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. This, I'm Ben Hutch with Match.com, the TV show. And I'm here with Cy and Josh. So, Josh, I heard you are now a member of the Billionaire, Billionaire's Boys Club at the Hidden Lottery. How does that feel? It feels relaxed, chill, mostly in, in related. I really do much of my time just kicking it back old school and then messing with the new school. Ooh. And then riding, driving my 1949 Chevy Filante. You a billionaire now, man. What you still driving that for, man? That's old. It doesn't matter if it's old or not. It's whether how classic it looks when you drive around slow. Smooth. Okay. Smooth. So, okay. you know, I'm, I'm cool with the TMZ people now, and they, uh, we caught you inside on the beach, you know, the day after you hit the uh, lotto. So, are y'all, you know, a relationship, a thing? Um, I would 100% I would say so. Yeah, I, nice. I would say so. <laughs> um, you know, it's just good weather on the beach and a good guy in his, in his car. So... Couldn't pass up. That is what's up. So, you're a billionaire now. No kids. I'm pretty sure you quit your job. What do you do with all the money, you know? Just instead of relaxing with it, what you gonna do outside of just relaxing with your money? He spends Simple. it on me. <laughs> no, uh, 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 uh. Him, him, that's 50%. The other 50, I put into stocks and bonds and investments. Make more money. Smart. 
Very smart. Smart man. Smart and the money, man. either put it in a money market or a certificate of deposit account. It only makes me more rich. You like money, I can tell, I can tell. It's not the reason why, why I'm trying to get rich. The reason why I'm trying to get rich is to make enough money as possibly as I can, then dole it out to the nearest char charity afterwards once I pass, pass away. So you have a heart. And once, I, and once I do ha have kids, it, once they, if they ever get greedy on it, then their financial lines will be cut from the wow. money tree permanently. Or at least until, until some, at least they can learn to get their act together. So it's this new style, everybody talking about what you feel like that, man. How, how you feel? You, you, going, you, you won the lottery, and now they got you and your girl chilling like that. How does, how does, how does that feel? To be honest, I just like just the how I roll. Just simple, how he rolls. classic. Let's try, how he that, roll. let's try that big band. It, there you go. Ooh, yeah, it's comfortable. I'm digging this. Might have to steal this from you, brother. <laughs> you can steal, steal, steal my style, but the one thing you can't steal is my money. Oh. That's all for today, folks. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, my man Josh. Hope he puts over that money in my bank account. Until next time, people. Thank you. Janix is out of here. Peace, yo. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jerry Springer, Hood Edition. I'm here with Almighty Spenzo, uh, young, talented rapper, and his girlfriend, uh, Shania. So, Spencer. Is there anything you want to tell the audience about y'all's uh, relationship? <clears throat> well, any I, secrets, anything like that? Honestly, I think it's going pretty good, but um, <sighs> man, I I really don't want to say this right now because. Say <laughs> <Hey>, what? <sighs> mm. so, is there something you need to say? America needs to know. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but I kind of got somebody that was pregnant on. So, well, you're saying you, you have another female out there that is pregnant? Pregnant? A baby? Another female? Seriously? I, is, is, this, is this real? No. Or is this, is this a joke? No. Another whole, like, she's pregnant, like, nine months, like, you, you cheated on me? I, w I was going to tell you, but... <laughs> Where is she at? She's at work. At work. And yeah. you've been cheating on me this whole time. Anything else you want to say? So, so, so uh, I'll, I'm going to ask uh, Shania. This is a question for Shania. Do you, have you ever had thoughts of cheating on Spencer at all? Yeah, I actually have before. But, you know, I just never, you know, when you love somebody, you just don't let them find out. Like, if you know, love somebody enough, they're not going to find out. But you are bold enough to tell me on national television, everyone, I've got cheated on. My husband has got another Woman pregnant, and you know what? That's fine because I have a sugar daddy anyway. So how about that? He's been paying the bills, not me. And you're broke anyway, so I don't know how you're gonna take care of the baby. You can barely take care of me. Can't even get my nails done. Look at this. Look at this. Well, um, no do, good. You, do you do you have anything to say to the Oh, he ain't yourself? got nothing to say. He don't. Not one word. Look at him, pathetic. Do you, do you have anything to? She probably a midget. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. This is good. No, but Spencer, Spencer, serious. Oh no. Um, who who is this female? Who is this? Who listener? is she? Please tell me. Who is she? What's she work at? What's her name? Name for you to find out. For so. me to find out. You done already told the world I done got cheated on. What else is this? I mean, what? What you think, I'm gonna go hunt her down? What, what do you think? Possible. All right. um, I really don't care. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, folks, that's all the time we have on Jerry Springer Hood Edition. And I will be back next week to find out who is this mystery woman. Thank you, Asin. We had so much fun. Thank, Thank you. you.